Welcome back to the uh, Biostock Life Science Summit. And after a very interesting panel discussion, we are ready for a just as interesting presentation by Danish uh, company expression Biotech and the CEO Ben Fansen. Welcome, and the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Thank you, Biostock, for allowing me to present expression biotechnologies at this virtual event. My name is Ben Fransen, I'm CEO here, and I'm very pleased to present here on the back of very important information Les yesterday we released on the manufacturing for our first clinical trial in our COVID-19 project. We are a Scandinavian biotechnology company focused on infectious diseases and oncology solutions, where we make vaccines and immunotherapies. We uh, have been operating in uh, DTU Science Park, north of Copenhagen, for 10 years now and got listed at the uh, uh, First North uh, NASDAQ growth market in 2016. And importantly in our story is three years ago, we established Adap Adapback, which is a joint venture uh, between Expression Biotechnologies and a research group coming out of Professor Ali Salanti's group at the Institute for uh, immunology and microbiology at Copenhagen University. We uh, are now in a phase where we transition our company from a more uh, service provider uh, business model to a pipeline driven company. And in this connection we already have established a very unique pipeline within the COVID-19 and breast cancer as well as influenza and malaria. Our technologies are well protected. We have a uh, very uh, new and experienced management. I started myself as CEO in the company uh, a little year ago. Uh, I've been in the company four years and have 20 years of uh, life science experience. Furthermore, we have just uh, concluded a cash raising process here in October where we raised 131 million Swedish kroner uh, with potentially up to 85 million Swedish kroner more. This is targeted for our pipeline focused uh, company and uh, the development of our pipeline. Very briefly about the technologies that we have. We have a uh, certain insect cell based technology that allow us to produce difficult to express proteins. So we can express, that is manufacture, very complex proteins and we have 10 years uh, of experience in the company uh, doing this and we have actually also clinical stage projects within malaria based on the proteins being produced in these insect cells. The benefits of this system, it's a very fast system, so we can very quickly research uh, in the early stages. And we can also say that we now have clini clinical uh, validation for, for the use of this technology. Furthermore, it's very cost competitive, which is especially Im important when we talk about the malaria, where we uh, can make uh, relatively cost-friendly uh, pr uh, proteins for the vaccines. Then we have this very important uh, virus-like particle technology, which is residing in the joint venture at AppMac. And this is, as it says, uh, a virus-like particle. It uh, resembles a particle, very safe, has no viral genetic elements. But the invention here is that we can bind any protein of interest on the surface of this ball-shaped uh, uh, molecular structure. And this enables us to, to make very uh, directed uh, vaccines and building a very strong immune response. Uh, furthermore, we can say that we've seen now that we have proof of concept in animals. It's a very fast immune response and a very long-lasting immune response as well. So with these two technologies, the insect cell-based protein production and the virus-like particle technology, we have embarked on uh, developing our own products uh, this year, actually. And this is how we, we uh, depict our pipeline. I'll spend a bit more time on the two first uh, pr uh, projects within coronavirus and breast cancer, uh, we, which are approximating uh, Clinicare within, within the next couple of years, helped by the recent catch uh, raising process. So for the COVID-19 project, we have seen some very strong data since we started on this. It started in the beginning of the year in uh, February 
this year we announced that we would uh, initiate a development project based on manufacturing the SARS-CoV-2 antigens in the Drosophila S2 insect cells, and we would couple it to the virus line particle technology. Within a month, we had established a development consortium, which is financed by an EU Horizon 2020 project uh, grant. So this actually allows us to, to pursue this project vigorously until and including a first clinical trial, which we are uh, soon starting. So we have seen uh, during the project in animal data that we are able to boost the immunogenicity significantly. And more importantly, with just a single injection in animals, we see a long lasting protection. And if we compare with other published preclinical literature uh, out there of all the different uh, COVID-19 projects that are out there, we are actually on a level which is significantly like in, in hundredfold higher than other projects. Even the, uh, the messenger RNA and DNA, DNA vaccine technologies. Furthermore, we have a very nice storage condition. We can see that we can handle this uh, stable in, uh, in ambient temperatures that's between two and eight uh, degrees. And we have preliminary uh, stability data showing that we can even handle it uh, in room temperature. Furthermore, this type of vaccine we're, that we're making is very relevant also to uh, targeted populations uh, for Uyghur or elder population uh, which we aim at with this vaccine. Last week, uh, Bavaria Nordic, our licensee for this project, announced uh, some very exciting uh, monkey uh, animal data, and that's non-human primate, NHP data, and they actually further support the preclinical data we have seen so far. That's uh, a potentially one-shot only vaccine with a long-lasting response. And Bavaria Nordic furthermore handles the uh, additional development into phase three and, and commercial uh, distribution of the vaccine, which can take place in 2021 if they find the right funding for this. We then have our breast cancer vaccine uh, project where we use the same principle. We make the HER2 antigen in the uh, insect cells and we couple it to the VLP. And again, we have some very exciting preclinical data that so shows a very long lasting response following administration of the, of the vaccine. So all in all, we have the potential here to break immune tolerance, uh, which is the holy grail if you're working with uh, cancer vaccines. And that's a strong proof of concept we've seen here. There are other animal data supporting this breast cancer vaccine project as well. Uh, the point with this project is that we, we have just raised uh, the, during the cash raising process here, the amount of money that will allow us to bring this project forward and until the first clinical trial in 2022. This is going to have the most attention in our company here in the next one to two years. We have an option to license agreement with uh, ADAPTMAC, where this project comes from, and uh, we are in the middle of uh, concluding the licensing ag agreement for, for this particular project. In connection with that uh, licensing agreement, we also have a share uh, holder agreement with ADAPTMAC, where there will be a shift in the ownership uh, in connection for that. But I'm looking really much forward to gaining 100% control of this exciting project. Looking at our pipeline again, uh, just also raising the uh, market figures that we have for this, it's uh, very high and, uh, and uh, promising for these vaccines. I'll skip quickly over this slide, just uh, highlighting that we have a new management, as I said myself. We have uh, also Keith Alexander, our CFO, who joined us here 1st of October with a very strong bank banking background and will handle us in our transition going forward, as well as <coughs> uh, Dr. Wien de Jong, our CSO in the company. And not least, the news flow here in the very near term, during 2021, we will progress. Uh, if Bavaria Nordic succeeds, we have uh, actually already a strong revenue stream coming from the COVID-19 project in the HER2 
uh, breast cancer vaccine project that will take most of our attention uh, within our R&D resources during 2021 with the aim of starting the first clinical trial in 2022. And just briefly on influenza and malaria, of course, we are also progressing on those. I'm, I'm looking forward to presenting more on those also for next year. Thank you. Thank you so much for a very interesting presentation. I think we'll have to start at the COVID-19, which I'm sure is what everyone is, is most course. interested in, of course. Starting quite general, what is your view on the competitive landscape after this week when Pfizer and Moderna has announced very positive results from their COVID vaccine trials? Sure. Yeah. So they, uh, Pfizer and, and Moderna, they are basing their vaccines on so-called messenger RNA uh, technologies. We've known since uh, spring that these technologies could make them lead the development plan. But we've said all along, we're actually not in this development for winning a race. We cannot do that with the technologies that we have at hand, but we're in it for being the best. And we have reason to believe based on these clinical data that I showed, where we are more than a hundred fold higher in the, in the immune response and in the neutralizing an antibodies that we have a very, very efficacious vaccine. So that's very promising. Mm. So in your view, it's a long, it's a marathon, not a sprint, getting to a vaccine. Uh, we're, all here <laughs> to, we're all here to save the world. Yeah, yeah of course. Right? So, <laughs> and we come with an approach where we can even target the elderly, as I said. I think mm. there's a very strong need also uh, to give targeted vaccines uh, that will have an um, important uh, marketplace for our vaccine as well. And if we look ahead to, to next year, then what are the main milestones that the shareholders can can look forward to? Uh, obviously, actually, the first clinical trial. Of course. Uh, the manufacturing batch that we have now produced at GMP, that's good manufacturing mm -hmm. uh, uh, scale. That means that we have the material that we can use for people that's then being analyzed and it has to, to go into the clinical trial application. So. We expect to start soon. I cannot say exactly when, but that was uh, going to be my next question, <laughs> of course. But yes, but but uh, we still aim at having first data uh, during Q1 uh, 2021. So mm -hmm. that's that's uh, good. Yeah. yeah. Well, we will, like everyone else, be following that with great excitement. Thank you so much for coming here today and telling us about it. Thank you very much.